April 17th, 1906, San Francisco. Every hotel lobby in town is filled. Filled with people all hoping to catch a glimpse of the visiting celebrities. Mrs. Patrick Campbell, the great star of the theater. Sandow, the world's strongest man. Enrico Caruso, who tonight will sing Carmen at the Opera House. However, no one is paying the slightest attention to this man, to this bellboy. No attention whatsoever, and that's unfortunate. Because on this day, this man is far and away the most important human being in San Francisco. It's a great pleasure to have you with us, Senor. Senor? Wagon. A lift. Let me off at seven. Running his ragged, huh? Oh, boy. Never seen the likes. Registering in droves. Guess it's Caruso, all right. You shouldn't do that. Why not? It isn't right, that's all. So it's not right. Here, come on. Have one on Sandow, the world's strongest man. Oh, thanks, I, I don't drink. You mean not anymore? All right, not anymore. You mean not when somebody's looking, huh? Hmm. World's strongest man. Did you see him fight that lion out at the park Sunday? No. A dollar a ticket. For what? You got better teeth than that lion. Just a minute. Mm. That's I call mellow. They catch you with your job. You ought to know. Anyway, who's going to catch me? <laughs> Dollar a ticket. Right. Huh? I'll take a piece of that ice. It's so hot I could pass out. Sure, help yourself. He'll be all right. Thank you. I call the hotel doctor. I'm terribly sorry about all this inconvenience. Oh, inconvenience. You should be sorry for him. Look how pale it is. I, I guess I think, Mr. Adams. If you were feeling ill, Perkins, you should have reported to the bell captain. Better take him on bed. Be careful for your back, Papa. I'm, I'm all right now. If you get up so quick, you're going to faint again. You really shouldn't trouble yourselves. The doctor will be here at any moment. Couldn't you make it to your own room, Perkins? Sir, I'm perfectly all right. Really, I am. I, I don't need a doctor. Look how blue his lips are. Sit down for a moment. Uh, I, I don't have to. I'm, I'm all right now. Good. Then attend to Signor Bandetti's luggage at once. Yes. Oh. And uh, bring a vase for their flowers. Yes. He's quite all right, madame. How do you know? I trust your stay with us will be quite comfortable, madame. Good day. Good day, sir. I trust you'll be quite comfortable with us. We're going to try. <laughs> this one room is bigger than our whole village back in Sicily. Mm -hmm. Eh, Rosa? Your uncle who said I was no good. Ma, what did he say now? Way that you get the bill, Mr. Smartman. <laughs> hey, are you still blue? I'm, uh, I'm all right now, really. Uh, good. We want our kids in Salinas to know we got here all right. Yes. How we do? Well, the best way is to 
Send a telegram. There's an office downstairs. Without the English, it's not so hundred percent. You help us with the words? Sure, I'll, I'll bring up a blank as soon as I get the vase. You know, Mr. Banditti and me, we were married four years ago today. Uh, congratulations. And the uh, children and the grandchildren and the bambini and the family, they want to give us a big party. We snuck off. <laughs> we're going to be by ourselves in a fancy hotel. Me and this pretty signorina. Oh, signorina. What that man gonna think about me? I'm really his wife, you know. <laughs> oh, you get him crazy every year. Uh, this for you. Five dollars. Thank you. Use some of that money to buy some herbs. When you come back, I'll tell you the name. They're going to make you feel better. Yes, ma'am. I, I hope you both have many more years of happiness together. Uh, grazie. We hope so, too. Eugenio. He's a nice man. But five dollars. So, I'm sport. Tonight, Caruso. And then, I take you dancing. And after, drinking wine until, uh, who knows, three, four o'clock in the morning. And tomorrow I call for the kids. Come for Papa funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Not like this. I'm sorry. But that poor man, he upset me. I told you he's sick. Yes. You told me. It must be almost five o'clock. If it wouldn't embarrass the hotel, I should press charges against you, Perkins, and send you to jail. Now pack your things and get out. Get out? Get out. Oh, look, Mr. Adams, I've, I, I've been sitting here thinking about it. At first, I was gullible enough to believe you were ill. What are you talking about? Spreading panic all over the hotel. 
But I, I saw an earthquake. Now, let's stop these little games. Harris, come in here. Now then, Harris has told me all about it. I sure hate it, do, Gerald, but what can I do? I warned you. Warned? If you ever so much as ever try to get another job in this town... W warned about what? Mr. Sandow complained. What could I do? Stealing whiskey. Stealing? Getting drunk, terrifying the guests. I, I didn't steal any whiskey. Oh, come on, Gerald. Look, he's saying that to save his own neck. Mr. Adams, I got an awful lot of orders. Very well. Get back to work. You'll be out of here in five minutes. I tell you, it was Harris. I find nothing in Harris's records about being in hospitals because of alcohol. That was years ago. Please, Mr. Adams, listen to me. All right, fire me. I don't care, but, but listen to me. I've been sitting down here trying to figure out what happened. I know what happened. No, 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 please, listen to me. This, this may sound absolutely ridiculous, but maybe... Maybe I was given a power to, uh, to sort of look ahead so that I could warn the people and save them from dying. I tell you, I saw an earthquake. Perkins, have you lost your mind? Out there, I, I saw those walls crumbling and upstairs in the pantry, the shelves. And then there was that noise. And it was a clock. And the clock said, 5.13. And that is when it's supposed to happen. Please take me seriously. Even if it is one chance in a million. It's almost 5.13. Indeed it is. Well, then do something. Such as? Warn the people. Even if it is a false alarm. 5.13, you said. Yes. It is now exactly 5.22. Let us hope that all our earthquakes prove so mild. Tell the chef not to be surprised when he gets the bill. For a zucchini like that, he's got to pay, especially when he takes me away from my afternoon nap. What's the matter with you? Did the horse hurt you? Are you all right, mister? Are you all right? Yeah. Then why did you scream like that? Uh, come on, we got to finish unloading. I have to be back here tomorrow bright and early. I hope the dinner party is a big success and that Caruso's singing is as good as my zucchini. Say, say, wait. Yeah? What you said about tomorrow, bright and early. Yeah? What time do you get here tomorrow? Same as always. Why? What time? What time? What's it to you? About five. Well, if you already know, then why ask? Look, don't come back here tomorrow. Why? Because if you do, you'll be killed. <laughs> no, I know. Listen. It isn't 5.13 tonight, it's 5.13 tomorrow morning. I know, believe me, I know, I know. Get away from no, me. No, I know, come don't on, go. Get her. Please, come wait, on, wait, I know. Go, stay there. Don't come back here. Anything happened to Mrs. Parks down the street. Just this beautiful little bulldog back of a ride. Well, it's gone too, just disappeared. Let's drop on the poor old lady's heart. She keeps going around calling, Dear Homer, dear Homer. Such a beautiful voice. The cat, there's not an alley cat left in the whole neighborhood. You know those fancy people, the Lesters? 
at three angoras. All gone. Now, why would all the animals disappear like that? You know, even the birds have gone. There's a fellow that does handiwork around our house. He keeps pigeons, homing pigeons. All gone. Every last one of them. Just poof, gone. Makes a person wonder. It's spooky, that's what it is. Because the animals know. That's why they ran. Somebody must believe me or you'll all be killed. What? I, I saw it. The walls came crashing down and then there was that noise and, and, and the people crushed by the rocks. Please, please, you must believe me. I'm, I, I'm telling the truth. I, I'm telling the truth. Somebody. Somebody must believe me. Crusoe was more pleasing to the ear than to the eye. It must be noted that his Don Jose had too many chins. Come to much faster. Excuse me. Yes? I've been to all the other papers, but they won't believe me. About what? I saw it. Please, you must listen to me. It should be put into the headlines. I'm just the drama critic. The news office will open at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, 8 o'clock's too late. Could you wait till I finish this review? The printer will be in to pick it up any minute. No, I, I can't wait, don't you understand? I, if I'm wrong, let them laugh at me, I don't care, but if I'm right, then the people will be warned and lives will be saved. When's the world gonna end this time? Oh, I'm sorry. No disrespect meant, but frankly, there have been so many of you fellows around the last couple of years that, well, I suppose one gets jaded. It's not the world that's going to end. It's San Francisco. I couldn't have been dreaming. I was awake each time. I saw it as, as clearly as anything I've seen in all my life. You saw what? The earthquake. Call him ready yet, Mr. Stevens? Yes, Harry. This gentleman's been telling me something quite extraordinary. My first inclination was to have him thrown out of here, but I can't explain it. I have the strangest impulse to... Sir, you tell him about the... the hallucination or whatever you call it. And if he doesn't laugh out loud, I just might make a jackass of myself and wake up the editor. Don't wake up the editor, Mr. Stevens. I've heard all his hallucinations. Ask him about the one he had the night my mother died. Harry. Harry. What is it? Harry, please. please. He'd been dead drunk for a week. He came staggering home a couple of hours after she was dead. Harry, I'm, I'm, I'm not drunk Ask now. him about that hallucination. Harry. Listen. He's my father, but I wouldn't admit it. I just don't want you to get in any trouble. Harry. Harry, look at me. I'm not drunk. Look at me. I'm not drunk. He doesn't look drunk now. He hasn't been sober in 40 years. Harry! I didn't want to come. But it was the last place. I saw the earthquake. I saw the people being killed. You still don't think he hasn't drunk? Harry! Oh, I've seen him this way a thousand times. If you want to call the editor, well, let me make a call for you. Central, give me the police. No. Hello. I want a police wagon. No, no Harry, one. please, no! No, no Harry, no! 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 You finally got him quiet, huh? Yeah, but what a night. Oh, cheer up. It's almost a quarter after five. In 45 minutes, we can go home.
If you had not talked me into leaving, we would be down there. It was not me, Papa. It was him, that man. He was not sick. He knew. How? This fire will burn for another 20 hours and will leave San Francisco in ashes. As in many other disasters, there will emerge legends of psychic phenomena which no one can prove or disprove. The hallucination of Gerald Perkins is only one example. Another, well, legend, if you will, is the unexplainable message received by a railroad telegrapher in Ogden, Utah, telling of the earthquake and urging that medical and food supplies be sent to the stricken area at once. <laughs> 